what 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 is going on YouTube it is the BeatGate Cop360 here and once again we find ourselves in the car with another vlog at it again um so anyway um once again I'm doing another one of these because like I don't know I'm still thinking there's a lot of shit going on uh some fucking company came at me and you're like oi you want to review some of our routers and shit came out of nowhere I don't know where this is coming from but you know I'll talk about that later getting into it so obviously Ryzen had its launch, um, or in other words, the reviews for the Ryzen series of CPUs, Ryzen 7, came out a few days ago, and of course, it came out to quite a bit of controversy. Now, you see, the thing is, the Ryzen 7 CPUs perform well, I mean, it's trading blows with the 6900K, the 18X, the 1800X, sorry, in that matter, it's trading blows with the 6900K in workstation-based scenarios such as rendering and coding and whatnot i mean the cpu performs really really well and i'm glad to see it i mean even the 1700 and the 1700x both low clocked um but the 1700 at 3 gigahertz and a boost to 3.7 uh the 1700 x at 3.4 boost to 3.8 even those cpus are performing very very well they are competing with intel's one thousand dollar part however despite all of that guys despite all of that it was all overshadowed by Ryzen's inconsistent and unusual gaming performance. Now, guys, let's let's be clear for a second, right? The Ryzen, the gaming performance of Ryzen Seven right now, like it's not very good. Now, of course, I'm not. I wasn't expecting it to be competing with the 7700K. That would be stupid. The 7700K is pretty much Intel's bread and butter gaming chip. It clocks so high, the single third performance is pretty much unbeatable. Like, it's really, really good. And of course, it overclocks well. But the thing is, the Ryzen 7 series of CPUs aren't performing where they should be. The 1800X is trading blows with the 6900K in single third performance and in multi third performance. So, in reality, it should be doing the exact same thing in gaming. However, you see, this is where everything is like kind of screwed up. AMD is obviously running into some issues with, um, for one, someone's been saying that. Uh, Ryzen actually runs better on Windows 7, which is very ironic given Ryzen, uh, Windows 7 is actually completely supported by Ryzen or AMD says that, you know, Windows 10 is really the only native support it has, but like, yeah, it's very interesting to see and on top of it performing better on Windows 7, of course, what I just said is courtesy of, I didn't think in the Nantech user called the stilt or the slilt, some shit like that, he pretty much went in, he got Ryzen on Windows 7 and he benchmarked and he had much much better minimums on Windows 7 and he had higher average uh, frame rates as well so that in itself is an issue and of course um, SMT when SMT is disabled on Windows 10 I'm not really sure about Windows 7 but at least on Windows 10 um, the frame rates are considerably better uh, which is or not considerably they are better on average they turn out to be better so that's another issue. Obviously, Windows 10 is not really treating uh, Ryzen's extra threads or 8 core 16 threads properly, and there is a clear issue there. Some people are talking about some shit to do with uh, the Windows 10 scheduler and not working properly. I don't really know much about that. I'm not really the type of guy that really knows a lot about that, and I'm still learning, so I'm not going to talk shit out of my ass. I'm not going to be like, yeah, yeah, the scheduler, blah, 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 blah. I don't really know much about it, but if you guys do know something about it, that is apparently part of the issue. But guys, the main point of me making this video is pretty much to say that, look, the gaming performance of Ryzen, while it's decent, like, it's pretty good. Let's, let's not get away from the fact that Ryzen was a pretty successful launch. It was just overshadowed and overplagued by these gaming issues. And since everyone's like, oh, gaming, gaming, binging, blah, 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 that's what made such a big deal about everything. And everyone's full talking shit. The Ryzen 7 CPUs are good, without a doubt. And I honestly wholeheartedly believe that AMD will be able to patch this up, or Microsoft, if it's some super Windows 10, will be able to patch this up. I think the gaming performance will gradually increase. Because, guys, once again, we have to remember that this is a brand new architecture. Zen is new. It hasn't been seen on fucking Windows 7, Windows 10, on anything. So, of course, you're going to run into issues at the start. We've still also still got those memory issues with the IMC that AMD has to sort. There's a lot of crap that still needs to be sorted, and I hope will get sorted. Don't forget, guys, Intel's X99 platform had... 
its own issues on launch. Every single architecture or new arc has issues on launch. Every new platform, X99, um, fucking... Um, oof, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think here. X99, I don't want to say Z170 because it's pretty new, but like... Um, was it Z58 or X58? That X58 was an um, extreme, extreme edition uh, chipset. Anyway, continuing on, I'm just blabbering on. Um, this was to be expected. It was never gonna be the smoothest launch ever. And like, honestly, guys, just wait. Now, of course, when I say just wait, people are gonna be like, oh, well, Cobbs, this is exactly what people said with Bulldozer. People said, oh, just wait, the optimizer Bulldozer, yada, 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 and it won't happen. Well, so you see, guys, the thing between Ryzen or the Zen architecture and Bulldozer is that Zen has been proven to have good single and multi threaded performance. Zen has been able to trade boys the 6900K with the Extreme Edition i7s. It's been proven to be good at rendering, encoding, compression, and whatnot. Bulldozer was never this good, so the comparison is completely unwarranted. I get why people would try and make the comparison, because you're like, oh, people talk about optimizations, yada yada yada, and nothing ever happened, and Bulldozer like, ended up being a flop. I see where they're coming from, but when you actually look at the performance of Ryzen in different applications, and you see it in relation or relative to its Intel competitors, it's going to be performing well. It shouldn't be performing like this in gaming. This is inconsistent with how Ryzen actually performs, guys. So, like, once again, I wouldn't be so quick to jump to judgment. I think as time goes by, things will get better. And even still, the gaming performance isn't that bad. Now, continuing on, I'm going to address this point before. I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, AMD didn't mark this for gamers. They marked it for streamers and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, that is true, guys. But at the same time, if you buy a 7700K and use NVIDIA, um, sorry, Intel QuickSync, like, yeah, like, I get that, especially when you're using more threads, you're doing streaming, you're doing all this other shit while you're gaming, then yeah, the Ryzen 7 will be better. But like, regardless of all of that, it should be performing better than what it what it is. I'm not saying it's a bad CPU. You guys know I'm on the side of it being a very, very good CPU, especially for that price. But, like, there's clearly some issues. That just needs to be ironed out. It's not a bad thing. It's to be expected. I don't know why there's some massive deal about it. Some say AMD should have waited a little longer, delayed Ryzen. But at the same time, like, there was a lot of delays going on, guys. So, I don't know. Some would argue that it was better to just get the product out and have it like this. I mean, it was still a good launch. People are still going to buy it. I mean, Ryzen is still going to be performing well. And it'll sell well. But, like, they need to... These issues still need to be, um, you know, carved out, ironed out. And I honestly think that at the end of the day, it's going to be performing really, really good in gaming as well. And even now, once again, it's not even performing that bad. So, like, <laughs> once again, I hold, I get the whole, you can just buy an i5 thing, yada, yada, yada. But at the same time, an i5 doesn't compete with Ryzen 7 at all. Or even the 7700K gets destroyed by the 6900K and Ryzen 7 and all those workstation type tasks. So you can't just chuck that out the window and completely ignore it. Some people will say, oh, well, you can just use GPU acceleration. Well, GPU acceleration isn't actually everything. At the end of the day, the better CPU performance and the more cores and the more threads will help you whether you're buying a 6900K or a fucking Ryzen 7 1700X or an 1800X. Otherwise, you could argue, what would be the point of buying a 6900K yet a let alone a 6950X at all? Just buy a 7700K and then use... um. What's it called? GPU acceleration? Well, no, there's obviously a market for these higher end chips. I think we're just so accustomed to Intel's heavy pricing that everyone is pretty much looking out to bag on AMD. Like, once again, these chips perform well. I don't see what the whole big deal is. I think things will get better for them. And honestly, I'm keen, man. So I'm probably going to end up buying a Ryzen chip when I get some money. Probably buy the Ryzen 7 1700. It's 469 Australian dollars, which is nice and cheap. Uh, but those motherboards, an X370 motherboard is like 200 Australian dollars or 220 to be particular or to be specific. So anyway, guys, that was pretty much it. I just wanted to get this video out, clear the air a little bit because there's a lot of talk and, like, and there's a lot of specific criticism towards Ryzen um, about this whole gaming performance thing. Yet everyone wants to completely ignore its performance everywhere else. I'm going to actually link it in the description. It's performance elsewhere. Just look at the fucking reviews. That's all you have to do. People are just so focused on gaming and they don't actually look and research and think, you know, why is this happening? Why is this performing like this? Why is this an issue? Why is this problematic? Yada, 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 yada. Everyone's just like, oh my God, Tomb Raider DX12, it's performing like shit. 
Ryzen's are terrible. It's flop. It's a flop. GG, GG. Completely ignoring the fact that it's half the price of its $1,000 competitor. And yes, some would say, well, it's priced competitively or it's priced against the 7700K um, and it's performing worse. Well, yeah, it's just performing worse in gaming. You can't just ignore every single other CPU-based benchmark in this fucking game. Or well, not in this game, like, you know when I say game, you guys know what I mean. In this industry, yada, 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 yada. So, pretty much, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This is just another chilled video. Once again, I'll do a much more technical-based analysis. But, like, right now, I don't really, it's not that I don't have the time. It's kind of I don't have the time. I'm doing other shit right now. And, like, I just like this format for now. I like talking to you guys. So, pretty much, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Tell me what you think about this whole gaming thing, this whole Ryzen performance thing, these launch issues. Once again, I do know that Ryzen isn't consistently beating the 6900K. Of course it's not. But, like, it's trading blows with it. Of course, the 6900K, I believe, in the majority of workstation tasks, would still win. But Ryzen 7 is putting on a hell of a fight. And let's not forget, it's half the fucking price. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And the Big K will see you later.